Hello students, in today's video we are going to discuss pharmacology of alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Now alpha glucosidase inhibitors are used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus either alone or usually combined with other anti-diabetic drugs. Now alpha glucosidase inhibitors category of oral anti-diabetic drugs include uh, drugs like uh, acarbos, megalitol, volgibos. Now acarbos is the most commonly and widely used alpha glucosidase inhibitor. In this video, we are going to study pharmacology of acarbose. Now, let's first understand what is alpha glucosidase. Now, alpha glucosidase is a family of enzymes that digest carbohydrates. Now, these include enzymes like uh, maltase, sucrase, isomerized maltase, located along the brush border of uh, intestinal epithelium. So, look at this figure. Uh, this shows a section of small intestine. This is the intestinal lumen and uh, this is the intestinal wall. This is the intestinal wall that is composed of intestinal epithelial cells termed as anterocytes. And this is a blood vessel where nutrients from the food like uh, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids are absorbed. Now, partially digested food from the stomach passes into the lumen of small intestine. Now these alpha glucosidase enzymes which are located along the brush border of uh, these intestinal epithelial cells, these enzymes break, uh, break carbohydrates. So look at the schematic diagram. Now carbohydrates like starch are present in food as polysaccharides composed of more than 10 sugar or composed of more than 10 glucose molecules and these polysaccharides are digested or they are broken down by the enzyme alpha amylase. Now when polysaccharide break, shorter polysaccharides composed of 3 to 10 sugar molecules are produced and these are termed as oligosaccharides. So here this is an oligosaccharide and it is composed of 3 sugar molecules. Now, this oligosaccharide is broken down by the enzyme alpha glucosidase and when it is broken down by the enzyme alpha glucosidase, there is release of glucose. Now, transport proteins in the wall of uh, intestine, they transport this glucose into the anterocytes and from anterocytes, this glucose is absorbed in the blood. Uh, so, after the consumption of food, this uh, absorption of glucose molecules in the blood cause postprandial, that is after meals, rise in the concentration of uh, glucose levels in the blood. Now, alpha glucosidase inhibitors like uh, acarbose block these uh, alpha glucosidase enzymes. Now, because of the blockage of these alpha glucosidase enzymes, Carbohydrates are not digested, carbohydrates are not broken down and thus glucose is not produced. And thus in the presence of a carbose after consumption of meal, concentration of glucose does not rise in the blood. Thus alpha uh, glucosidase inhibitors are antihyperglycemic. They prevent postprandial that is after meals rise in the concentration of glucose in the blood by preventing digestion of carbohydrates. They prevent rise in the blood glucose levels by inhibiting production and thus absorption of glucose in the blood. Now let's discuss pharmacology of acarbos. Acarbos is a complex oligosaccharide. A carbose is a competitive and reversible inhibitor of enzyme alpha glucosidase. So this prevents breakdown of oligosaccharides and release of glucose in the small intestine. Now a carbose also inhibits the enzyme alpha amylase. So this prevents breakdown of poly polysaccharides in the food to oligosaccharides. Thus a carbose inhibits both alpha glucosidase and alpha amylase. Thus, uh, non-absorbable polysaccharides and oligosaccharides in the food are not converted to glucose in the small intestine. 
Thus, a carbose slows down and thus decreases absorption of glucose in the blood. And this reduces postprandial, that is after meals, rise in the concentration of glucose in the blood. Now, in addition to this, a carbose also increases release of glucagon-like peptide 1, that is GLP-1, from the intestine. Now, GLP-1 inhibits release of glucagon from the pancreas. So, this prevents breakdown of liver glycogen to glucose. So, this action of a carbose also prevents rise in the levels of glucose in the blood. Uh, now let's summarize clinical benefits of a carbose. Now as discussed, a carbose reduces postprandial, that is after meals, rise in the blood glucose levels by preventing digestion or breakdown of carbohydrates in the food. Now as it prevents increase in the blood glucose levels, a carbose modestly decrease glycosylated hemoglobin levels in the blood. Now, further, by preventing rise in the blood glucose levels, a carbose reduces occurrence of uh, cardiovascular events like hypertension and cardiac diseases in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Uh, now, let's study some important uh, characteristic pharmacokinetic parameters of a carbose. A carbose is administered orally three times a day. At the beginning of each major meal, that is at the beginning of breakfast, lunch and the dinner. If any of the meals is skipped, then the dose of a carbose to be taken with that meal should also be skipped. Now only a fraction of administered a carbose dose is absorbed and a carbose is excreted in the feces. Now indications of a carbose, now as, as already discussed, a carbose is a mild antihyperglycemic as it prevents the absorption of glucose in the blood. It prevents rise in blood glucose levels. A carbose is not a hypoglycemic as it does not reduce already increased concentration of glucose in the blood. Now a carbose is uh, mainly used as a supplementary drug. That is, it is used in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs in the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Uh, now, let's understand adverse effects of a carbose. Now, gastrointestinal disturbances are the most commonly reported adverse effects of a carbose and these are produced due to the fermentation of undigested carbohydrates by bacteria in the colon which causes excessive gas formation. Now, flatulence occurs in around 78% of cases then bloating, abdominal pain and diarrhea can also occur. Now, a carbose can cause rise in the uh, liver transaminases and therefore liver function should be monitored before and during treatment with a carbose. Now as the site of action of a carbose is intestine, contraindications of a carbose include intestinal obstruction, then chronic intestinal disease, chronic uh, colonic ulceration, then inflammatory bowel disease, Use of a carbose is also contraindicated in diabetic ketoacidosis and in the case of known hypersensitivity to a carbose. So this is in brief on pharmacology of a carbose. Please note information provided in this video is only for academic informative purpose. For clinical use of a carbose or for the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.